Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. The topic of our session for next 30 minutes is about position zero result on the Google search engine page. Why is it so important for your brand, your organization, and what we can do to be there? I'll skip my introduction because of earlier, but I do want to summarize that me and my entire team, and in general, everyone should be vested in the field of search engine. And this is because no matter how great our website, our design, our content, and our applications are, if our consumers are not able to find them, search and locate the information, then it devalues all the effort and hard work that your team put in the first place to create them. So it's very important that we work on that aspect of uh, you know uh, while creating content. And in order to do that, we'll first look at Google as a search engine. We all know Google as the gold standard of the search engines out there. And uh, we all perform multiple searches on Google each day. And we are doing them to find information, to do research, to order food, to do shopping, check weather, uh, book flights, and, and so on and so forth. And it's not that Google started the whole search engine industry, but there were quite a few popular search engines before they uh, came up and they were able to make their space and actually have stayed at the top for almost or more than two decades now. So we need to look at how were they able to do that? And in order to do that, we have to see how Google works and what they have been doing to keep it enhanced. And if we look at the last 10 years uh, to analyze what's happening at Google, and this is a good timeline provided by Bright Edge, you will see that the Google team is working very hard in making sure that their search engine is the best search engine, it's the most efficient, and it's the most enhanced to provide the best experience for us, the consumers, so that we are able to find the information that we need quickly and also most accurately, which means that usually we should only take one search to find the right result that I am interest, most interested in. And you'll notice that you know, among all of these, each of these provided an important update which helped Google to sort out uh, the best results for the queries that we are making and bringing them to the top. I'll focus on the most recent one, which is called as the Core Web Vitals update on the Google search engine, and I'm sure quite a few of you have heard of it. And what that one did was that it was not just important to have good content on your website, make it most uh, more, you know, make it more mobile friendly and provide it over HTTPS and among other rules of search engines. Now Google is saying that many uh, site providers are have the or have the same content or have the same content in a mobile friendly way. So how does it sort out the best among them? And they're saying that now we're going to focus on the user experience on your site, and that is how fast your page loads with that content, and once it's loaded. How soon can the user start interacting with your content? And the last thing is how visually stable it is. Like as they interact on your site, are they having the best experience to find the information that they're looking for? And you know, so such updates makes it uh, a, a better search engine and also allows us to provide the content and provide a better user experience for our visitors. Now let's look at what is the position zero result. A position zero result appears uh, uh, as shown in the screenshot at the top of other search results on the Google search engine result page. And we'd have all noticed that since about January 14, uh, you know, a few of our searches or, or depending on what we are searching for, when we make that query, we'll get a result page that looks like this, which means that it actually shows you the answer to the question that you're asking right there in the Google search engine. And right underneath it, it actually shows you the link of the page where it sourced that information from. Why is this important? Well, it's kind of saying that Google trusts this provider, this organization or this brand who is providing that answer as the trusted source for that particular question. So it actually automatically increases the credibility of your brand and it's actually announcing, in other words, it's announcing to the consumer, which is users like us who are performing search, that hey, this particular organization is who we as Google trust to provide the best answer for your question. That also means that you should probably look at their website 
to find what you're looking for and interact with them or possibly give business to them. So that's why it's very important. Now let's look at what the Google, you know, the position zero result looked like. And when we analyzed the Google uh, position zero search results, we found that 70% of the position zero results are in paragraphs, which means they're straight up sentences that are providing the answers for the questions that you're that you're that you're asking for. The next 20% is in lists. So these are either uh, you know lists of things that you're asking for, list of places, things like that, and followed by tables, uh, uh, videos, images, and and charts. So it's not that it's always showing you answers that are in paragraphs. It also means that if your video is most relevant uh, to the question that's being asked, uh, then it will show the video. Next, we look at an interesting stat, and that's telling us the first figure is telling you that about 20% of all the searches that are performed globally on Google now have what's called as a position zero result, or in other words, it's also called as featured snippets. The next figure is showing me that 7.3% of all searches performed globally now have two featured snippets. What do they mean by that is that Google, uh, for the query that the user has put in, Google is saying that, hey, I believe there are two best answers for your question and actually shows you uh, those two snippets. So it's telling you that it's not just always uh, one result or the one answer that Google shows. It's possible that sometimes it might show you two answers based on the question that you're asking for. The last stat is very important, and this is saying that on a mobile device, the featured snippet, when it appears on the Google search and result page, it actually shows you that featured snippet on approximately 50% of the screen, which means that the user would have to scroll down to actually see the other search results. So it's quite important that we show up as the position zero result, because when you do that, you appear at the top and it highly increases the chance of someone uh, you know, coming to your site from mobile devices. And um, if you look at the statistics of how important the mobile uh, site visitors are, 50% of all internet traffic globally in 2021 is now coming from smartphones. And in 2020, which is the pandemic year, it was actually even higher and closely about 70%. And, um, and you'll notice that, you know, so what it's saying is that every other user is on a smartphone. And then when they're performing a Google search engine, if your result is the position zero result, which means that it's in the upper 50% of the screen, that most likely this user is going to come to your site for the information. Next, we're going to talk about the smart assistance, or in other words, voice search. And you notice that Internet of Things or devices are all around us, whether it be our smart door, smart fridge, uh, smart speaker, and all of these things, and it's going to keep increasing, which means that people are going to get more and more comfortable interacting with the smart, smart assistants or smart devices, and most of these allow you to ask a question. And when you ask a question to the Google device, it usually will bring back the results in a human uh, conversation as if it's an answer to a straight up question that you might be asking another person. And so far, the only best way to provide an answer is providing just one answer. Uh, as compared to in a desktop, when you perform a search, you get a series of pages and results. And uh, in, in, you know, as of now, there is no better way uh, to to you know for the Google or the other smart assistants to provide those answers and say like, hey, here is like the top ten and, and read you out all of them and say like which one you want to get like is that the second one or the third one that you want me to go and get the answer. So it's most efficient for the voice search uh, smart assistants to usually read out if there is a position zero result, it will read out that answer. And that is the featured snippet or the position zero result. So it's quite important again with the Internet of Things devices that your result shows up at the top. Next, we look at one more statistic, and this is showing you where these position zero results are coming from. And you know, some of this is probably quite um, uh, you know appropriate, which means that 98% of these are coming from HTTPS, and I'm sure that it's probably grown to 100% now because all the browsers are now mandating that your websites uh, have HTTPS, uh, which means that it has a secure certificate to serve the content. And these pages that are uh, providing the information for the position zero usually are long formed content, which means that it has about on an average more than 1,100 words. 
So it's providing elaborate information on, on the topic uh, that the user might be searching for. 66% of them provide structured data, which is schema, which I'm going to talk about a little later in this topic. And all of those are, have multiple headings and sub, subheadings, which means that it's formatted very well in different sections and provides that information. And uh, many of them have images, so it's important to have illustrations along with the along with your content that support each other to provide the answer. Now we look at what are these positions uh, zero results, and all of them are usually answers to questions. So you want to focus on the five W's, which is who, what, when, and examples are who is the best cardiac surgeon. What does the gastric bypass do? When to visit ER for COVID? So these are, uh, you know, I would say simple, straight up questions that are being asked, and these answers pop up. If someone was just searching for keywords, it is not likely that the position zero results will come up. But if you were to ask a question which is formatted with one of these five Ws, you will notice that more than likely it is going to have a position zero result. So if you want to be in a position zero result, it tells us that it has to be our content should be an answer to a question, and uh, that's how we could get to the position zero result. We look at one final stat, and this is showing me looking at the 10,000 most popular keywords searched that showed featured snippets of the position zero results, that the, the, uh, the answer or the position zero result does not change 53% of the time. What does that mean? It means that if you have some content on, on your site that you want it to be placed on the position zero and you're working on it. And if you make the search and you notice that your competitor is right now showing up there, that it's very hard to displace them, you know? And, but in other words, also means that if you were managed to displace them and your content becomes the position zero result, that once you have achieved that, that it's also harder to displace you, right? So, so once you have done all the hard work and then, uh, you know, once you have been marked as the position zero result, more than likely you're going to stay there if you follow all the rules that we're going to talk about. All right. Now that we know what a position zero result look like, let's talk about how we can get there, how we can bring our content to a position zero result. And it, I would divide that into two phases. One is doing the research and with all the content and information that you get out of your research, then having an action plan. So we'll first focus on what does the research look like. Researching for position zero result starts with first looking at your own content, your website, your application, and, and finding out the priority of the content that you feel will provide the best representation for your brand, the best outcome of this action in terms of uh, the effort to bring your, uh, your website uh, in the position zero. So you want to target you know, the top content that you want to work on, focus on first, and, and, and just work on those. The next thing is looking at that topic on your site, asking uh, or finding out like, you know, what are the possible questions that could be used to perform searches and get the results, which will be content that you have. And so you can provide, make a list of all of those questions. And once you have made that list, you can then use that list of questions and go on the Google search engine and perform searches. Why are we doing that? Because once we do that, we can see what's showing up right now on Google search engine and then be able to look at those results and then see are those paragraphs, are those lists, tables, videos, images, what are they right now that are showing up on questions that you think are the right targets uh, for your content? Because that tells you that if you were to format your content, that's how it should be to increase the chances of your content to come up to the top. Once you have done the research and gathered all that data, we're going to then have an action plan which is going to cover these six areas and I'm going to talk on each one of these. So you're going to structure our content for the five W's. You're going to optimize it in paragraphs, lists and tables, localize it, dating your content, which is very important. And we'll talk about that and the URL strategy of where we'll serve those content areas and then finally applying schema to it. So let's focus on the formatting and optimizing your content for the five W's. What you're going to do is taking your content, now that you know whether it should be a paragraph or a list or a table, what you're going to do next is 
organize it in such a way so that it's a long form content, meaning it's elaborate enough to cover all the different aspects of what the questions could ask. And towards the right of you, you have a topic such as knee replacement surgery, and it gives you a summary of all the questions, possible questions uh, that could apply for someone who is looking for uh, information regarding the knee replacement. For example, is it safe to do a knee replacement surgery? What is the advantage of a knee replacement surgery? What is the procedure for knee replacement surgery? You know, things like that. So once you have looked at that and you're creating content to answer all of those questions, um, you know, more than likely that you know you're going to qualify to show up in the position zero. The next thing that you want to do is that once you have gathered all the content is to organize them into several headings and subtopics. Uh, and then, you know, as we saw in the statistics that it's quite important, it helps Google to determine that you have that. And if possible, have a question and answer section, maybe at the bottom or somewhere, so that it then formats or targets all the questions that you thought are something that the person would search for, and then providing the answers for them, which qualifies because if the question matches exactly what a user could be searching for in Google, it's more than likely that you know you've increased your chances for your page to come up. Next, we talk about localizing. When you compete for a keyword on the Google search engine, you know you have a couple of different options. If you're competing for that keyword globally, it's very hard to come up to the top unless you are a brand or an organization that started that particular topic or you're known already uh, about that particular topic. Uh, but in, in, you know, in cases of small businesses or local brands, it's important to stay local and try to compete uh, for position zero results locally. You know, you have higher chances of showing up in position zero result because of that. And how do you do that? So once you have formatted the content, try to include your locations that actually provide uh, services that are, uh, you know, that, that are being targeted and also put in information such as proximity and why your brand is known locally, you know, provide some information around that. So that way Google can determine and, and tag and index uh, your content properly so that when a, a consumer is performing a search uh, who is close to your location, when they perform, uh, they are getting the results from your search engine, uh, from, your, from your website. So localizing content is very important. Next, we'll look at dating, uh, you know, applying a date to your content. Why is this important? When you apply a date to your content, it's helping Google to understand when was your content published, how fresh it is, and also it tells that, like, you know, when when the content becomes stale. For, for example, if you have created some content and hasn't been touched in two years, Google can determine that, hey, either your content uh, has enough information and it hasn't changed, or it could look at other people, other people's website and say that, hey, I see fresher content on the same topic from somewhere else. And it's likely that it's going to abandon your page and use someone else's website and show theirs result at the top. So if you were to keep your content fresh, date it and, and constantly update it with relevant information, with newer information, uh, it will help Google to determine that you know why you qualify for the position zero result. Another tool tip here, don't just date your content or, or change the date on your content for the sake of doing that, uh, but actually put emphasis on what are the users most, most interested in uh, in terms of that topic, like you know, and provide some new information on that. And with that, when you update uh, you know the date on your content, Google will keep you higher because it knows that you know it, it acknowledges that you're taking the effort. Uh, to find more information and staying on top of the research to provide the information that the user is looking for. Next is the URL strategy. So when you decide where you're going to put this priority content on your website, uh, realize that you know uh, it's best that your URL or the page location uh, for your content has less than 60 characters in the in the in the URL, and that usually means that it's either the in the first level of pages on your website or the second level of pages. You know, if possible, like, you know, it should be there. Why is that important is because the shorter the URL, uh, uh, the, you know, it tells Google search engine that that particular content uh, has a priority on your own website. So let's say if some content is six levels deep, you know, it has those six slashes and then it reaches to your content. It's telling Google is that, you know, this content is so deep in your own website that it's probably not 
not as relevant. So if it is on your showing up on your home page or if it's showing on the first level page or second level page, it, it treats them as a priority content on your site and then uh, in, in similar fashion, treats it as a priority for inclusion into the zero result page, uh, into the position zero. Next, you should have hyphens to separate out your keywords in the URL and also not have what's called as top words. For example, you know, common words that are you know, taken out by this Google search engine as irrelevant uh, and it would only take into consideration the, the rich keywords that it thinks um, apply for the topic uh, which is being searched for. And also most content management systems actually provide dynamic URLs, which means that usually it has a question and it says like ID equal to 23 or something like that. Uh, you know, it's highly encouraged that you don't follow that and actually have a vanity URL or a complete URL, which is words that showing you the content uh, or, or the address for the content that you want to serve. Lastly, I want to talk about sitemaps um, and uh, you know, most uh, businesses submit what's called as a desktop sitemap to Google search engine, but it's become quite important that you also submit a mobile sitemap to the uh, mobile sitemap to the search engine. And that's because Google over the years and actually now uses only the mobile format of your website to index uh, to, to you know index your results to to index the pages of, from your site into its search engine result. So um, that's why it's very important that uh, you submit both of them. So it's aware of all of your mobile pages, whether it could be the AMP pages and things like that that are not relevant on desktops, uh, but are relevant for the mobile are, are seen by Google. We're going to talk about schema now, and uh, we, uh, you know, there's quite a bit of research on this. It actually helps what's called as a Google knowledge graph, uh, which means that when you organize the content on your page for visual presentation, uh, it is good for any consumer that's, you know, performing the search and actually visually seeing the results. But most Google search engines, or, or sorry, most search engines out there are all robots that are actually indexing the page. So when Google sees your page, it's actually a computer program that's getting to your page and looking at the code. And that's how it's trying to find out what content you have on your page. It's, it's not able to see visually how your page looks like, but it's able to look at the code and making a determination of how your page is organized and things like that. When you apply a schema and you can find more information about it on schema.org on your content, it now helps Google search engine and other search engines to see what is uh, you know, the, 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 the um, semantics and I would say even the, the structure of your content. So for example, if you have a physician bio page, it's now telling not just it's not just reading the content as if it's a paragraph, but it can be organized in a structured data. For example, it could have name and say here's the physician name, uh, you know, image, and it shows the physician image and things like that. So structured uh, uh, schema is something that's applied in the code. It's not seen visually. It cannot be seen. It's not meant to be a visual representation, but it's more in the code. It tells the Google search engine bots what type of content you have and provides them a structured data to index it properly. Uh, and so it's very important to have schema uh, and uh, you know you can find out more on schema.org. Lastly, I'm going to end this presentation by looking at one other newer way of how Google is presenting data, and that's what it calls as people also ask. So beyond the uh, search uh, engine uh, position zero uh, result, uh, it now also has questions that you should be asking. So if I'm putting in a query and it's, it is able to relate that question and say and, and bring other questions that you should be asking or, or tells you that, hey, other people are asking for these questions. And then for each of those questions then provides a position zero result. So this is something that's evolving right now, uh, but it's quite interesting because Google as a search engine is in the business of uh, selling their ads uh, and they can only sell more ads if more people stay on their website. And this is uh, why it's it's working on position zero results is because when you find the answer for your question right on the Google search engine page, you stay with them instead of going to the other side. And uh, so that's why you know the next step towards that is people also ask. So it's also helping you not perform the second search. Uh, for example, you're trying to search for some topic, and then usually what we'll do is we'll perform another search or a third search to, to find more information about a topic. 
But here, what it's doing is that once you have performed the first search on a relevant topic, it then gives you all the uh, other relevant questions that you might ask right after that and then provide you answers uh, for right there. So with that, I'll end the presentation and we are open for any questions. Um, you can always also contact us uh, for any questions after this presentation as well. Uh, but we can all see why position zero result is important and what we can do uh, to, uh, to be there. I hope uh, this presentation was helpful and it helps you in your digital journey to, uh, to be best indexed on Google search engine. Thank you so much.